Hello everyone, Pulse here with another episode of Delving Deep ESO, and in this episode we're going to focus on the most recent beta weekend in which a fair number of major press sites had their NDA restrictions uh, loosened of sorts. Uh, they say removed, but not really, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The bulk and the main point of the video is to talk about the impressions coming from the press and their playtime with ESO. So to start, let's go into the character creation portion of the game. Thankfully, very few seem upset with what is being offered in ESO's uh, character creation tool set. There's a multitude of sliders and uh, a crazy amount of tweaks and other cosmetics that you can utilize when crafting your character, and all this combined should be more than enough to please just about anyone, especially if you're looking to replicate a prior test character that you may have played. Doing something like that will be pretty damn easy, and in general, making a pretty intricate character will be pretty easy as well. Now onto the graphics. Aesthetics are always a very divisive thing, and that's no different with ESO. Now some of the press are reporting that the game just looks awful to them. Uh, some are really just uh, unable to accept that this game has a slightly different graphical style, and, and some are saying it's like sacrilege of sorts, that they have deviated from the hyper-realistic. Others are more accepting of the fact that they have opted to do a different graphical style for this MMO. And then of course we have some of the fanboyish style reaction where this is the god of all games, that kind of thing. Now outside of the graphical style choice, there is also the actual quality of the graphics that we need to talk about, such as the textures and model quality. Now by MMO standards, the models look quite good. Not great by any means, but pretty good. The textures, likewise, are also very good. Not super great, but still pretty damn good. Uh, the one real big negative here for this part of the aesthetics is that the portions of the textures attached to armors, weapons, and some of the structures are maybe not up to snuff. Um, as you know, or maybe you don't know, Zenimax has done something kind of silly, at least I think so, by opting to make armors which are literally just texture stretched over the character model instead of creating separate models for each uh, given armor and by opting not to do that the armors don't have their own proper visual in some sense and they don't really feel like they exist in the world now that said despite Zenimax's real attempt to do something what i would consider old school when it comes to the armor implementation the texture quality is actually quite well done for the mass majority of the armors and this really does help alleviate this design decision so if you were kind of worried that you wouldn't be able to make a character look badass or make it look like you want because of this have no fear you will still be able to make your character look like an awesome dude now outside of these things it would appear that graphically the game in general looks quite good as well and more importantly it has been optimized a fair bit from their previous showings so that you you don't need a supercomputer to make this game look passable. Now on to the meteor bits of the game, uh, combat to start. Now for those who have been following this game, you will know that ESO has a hybrid combat system of sorts, which mixes the action style combat of test games with a more traditional hotkey setup for your actual skills and spells. This is where things start to get a little bit rocky for ESO. Uh, some people just can't accept that this is an MMO first and a test game second, and anything different than like Skyrim Online is distasteful to them. Now, I do understand why people would feel um, kind of upset by this design um, because they were being advertised. This this game was advertised as kind of like a co-op ESO or a test experience, and that's not really true. So I can totally understand why people would be upset, but we are not going to get a test game first, MMO second, which I've been saying for ages. Now, thankfully, this reaction uh, to Elder Scrolls Online is kind of a rare reaction to the combat. Um, however, it doesn't get much better from there. Um, the common phrases kind of going around between a multitude of different articles and videos uh, from the press are that it's bland, it's kind of boring, it's just it's lacking innovation, it's not engaging. And, and that's kind of sad, honestly, because from what little we have seen of the gameplay, it does look like it's pretty engaging and fun to, to do, uh, especially 
in the more hectic encounters and with friends and comrades around. Uh, overall, it appears though that ESO has a rather uninteresting combat system. Well, I should restate, it has an uninteresting combat system and gameplay in general, which leads into the next bit, which is the gameplay and questing. Now, obviously, combat isn't the only part of the game, but there are obviously the quests and other things to do. Um, because this is an RPG and an MMO, there are going to be quests to complete, conversations to be had, things to gather, armor to craft, and so much more that comes with this being an MMO and an RPG. And how does it stack up? Well, crafting looks pretty good, actually. Most people seem interested to see where the crafting will go in the game and are looking forward to see what they can do with it later on. Uh, voice acting in the game is actually really, really good. And across the board, the characters have nice voices and there, there's not any crazy outlying situations that I've seen anyway where the voice acting doesn't really match the character or the situation. Um, and more importantly, the voice acting is, is crazy. They've gone above and beyond to make it so that the cities feel like they're full of uh, characters that you can talk to because you can talk to just about anyone and they will have some sort of conversation some more than others obviously uh, gathering is a really really easy thing to do they've opted not to go the route of having a pickle or sickle or something like that a gathering item of sorts doesn't have to be purchased so you can go hit a node or grab an herb off the ground which is really nice because that's kind of a pain in the ass in other mmos now on to the questing this is where the boring kind of sets in. The general consensus with questing is that while the story itself isn't all that bad, it's not really engaging either, and the actual tasks required to move the story along aren't very innovative. It's basically MMO standard fare for a lot of it, and it's a bit off-putting for a lot of people since this is 2014 and not 2006. Now, the biggest issue with the questing does appear to be that even though they're standard fare, the biggest part is that there's a long traversal uh, area that you have to go across to get from one quest to another or from one place to another. Um, this is a little bit confusing in terms of reaction, to me at least, because this is what people wanted. They want the huge open world like a, a regular test game, but apparently they want to move at hyperspeed as well. But we'll come back to that uh, in a moment. So overall, everything that we were just going over, it's obviously not a great advertisement for ESO, is it? I mean, we have a good number of players bored to the point that they just don't want to play or they'd rather play Skyrim. Uh, another fair few feeling that it's just uninteresting and, and it might be fun sometimes, but it doesn't really justify a subscription fee. Uh, there's just something not really engaging about it. And then, of course, you have uh, the other, the two opposite, opposing sides, the overreactive types that are condemning this game to being utter shit. And then you have, like, the super fanboys that, again, like the graphics I was saying earlier, they think this is, like, MMO heaven, that kind of thing. Uh, but before I, I kind of end this video, wrap it up, I want to talk about what I think are some pretty crucial things that need to be considered when you are reading these reviews and seeing these reactions from game time. Uh, the first of which is that none of the, re the reports from the press are able to uh, share their experiences beyond level 15. They're, they're at, like Maybe people have been able to go beyond that, but from what has being said they aren't allowed to talk about their post level 15 experience thus Zenimax has made it so these press are, they're only allowed to report on their beginning portion of the game and I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and promote that uh, MMOs are allowed to have this really slow and laborious and, and kind of monotonous and boring start. That That's not allowed. It definitely isn't. It's been that way for ages with MMOs so MMO players are more accepting of this but it doesn't make it right, so I understand why people would be bored or feel that the gameplay is not very engaging and, and in some cases I'm kind of pissed because it, it's not very good. The problem is if you've ever played an MMO, you know exactly what I'm talking about where you, where you start out and it's just one skill, it's very slow. The thing is MMOs have a tendency to once you get somewhere beyond a certain level, in this case it seems like level 15 or 20 or so, the game opens up. And there's been a couple cases that I can find where people are kind of like hinting at, well this is our report on the beginning levels like 1 to 10, 1 to 15, after that it opens up tremendously both with the uh, the skill line system so you have a way to really customize your character beyond a couple skills as well as the openness of the world. Uh, again, 
there's no real way to confirm this because nobody is allowed to talk about their post level 15 experience so i really hope that these kind of hint hint nudge nudge moments are correct that the game does open up to make it feel better in general um, the second thing that's kind of important and crucial to this uh, topic is that travel is like i said before it's exactly what people were asking for they wanted this really big area to to explore so i don't really understand the complaining about having to run from area to area from quest to quest uh like i said you want a big expansive world with lots of nooks and crannies to explore then expect a longer distance to run uh you want to know why i mean th this is really aimed at the people that are complaining about this and and this is because eso has been developed with the idea that it can be as big and as expans expansive as any of the other test games that have came before it is going to be that big in scope and it really invites the notion of going off track going off the beaten path and exploring different avenues to your quests and in general just exploring the world doing the quests is just a chunk of the open world content i think that's something that has really been missed in most of the articles uh, another thing talking about the travel in the world in general is the the notion that they're getting bored is that's going to be slightly alleviated because uh, from what I can tell there's been zero uh, people talking about dark anchor events and from what I can tell they weren't working at least in the most recent beta uh, this is again something that needs to be added to the open world content uh, e equation when you're trying to discuss what you can do in it because if one of the major features isn't working of course you're going to get a little bit bored compared to when they are working that's just common sense now, one final thing, which I kind of mentioned earlier, is that even though Zenimax has seemingly lifted the NDA, even though it's it's still this overly restrictive thing, what they've done is made it so that you can only report on the first 15 levels. Uh, and I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, I didn't realize it was quite this bad until I believe Force said some things, and uh, I've, I've just it seems to be coming out now from all these people that you're only allowed to share like 15 minutes of gameplay. Um, you're you're only allowed to share 15 screenshots uh, like per blog kind of thing and and 15 minutes of gameplay I should say it's not like 15 per video it's 15 across the board so if you make three videos you're locked at like five minutes of footage it completely it, it's totally insane and yet again this is NDA hurting them uh, obviously they were hoping for the press to come out singing good graces for ESO obviously that's that's what they would have wanted but that's not what has happened and they they kind of hurt themselves here because they they didn't develop a great starting experience and then they left the press to report only on that starting experience it's it's silly i don't i don't know why they thought this was a good idea but i mean there's there's one other thing that needs to be said here um the the way that they did the nda and making it press only is hurting them more than anything here uh, there's been tons of reports from like the shoddy cast the game breaker guys me uh, there's there's no way for us to talk about our personal experiences without getting in tons of trouble and that's a huge mistake um, if if you've seen any of those guys if you're familiar with anything that they do and are up to date with their videos you'll have seen that they share a pretty similar sentiment to me that they want to talk about the game and I personally can say that even though this is a mostly negative or kind of neutral take on ESO, compared to them, I would have pretty positive things to say about the game. And even though I judge stuff kind of harshly a lot of times, again, this is something that's shared with between me and many other of what I would say the quote-unquote little guys. So I'm hoping really soon that Zenimax realizes that their NDA is just a load of crap and it's hurting them way more than it's helping them. That way we can talk, we can say what we want to say. So uh, really, w the last thing I want to say before I kind of wrap this up is that take what you see in these like reviews and this press kind of stuff, take it with a lot of salt because they are both restricted that way. And then the little guys, again, we can't say really much of anything. So see that stuff as just first impressions uh, beyond that point. There's so much more left of the game to be discussed, so I, I really wish 
that they would I almost hope that they come out and just do it very soon so that we can get on it because the longer they let they let the um, kind of press articles and stuff sit and the more people get to see them and be like oh this game is not it's not impressing anybody we're gonna move on to the next thing they need to jump on the ball and let us talk about it but uh, that's gonna do it for me guys um, thanks so much for watching uh, if you enjoyed make sure to like subscribe share with your friends comment down below on pretty much anything ESO MMO video game related in the slightest uh, one last thing before I go we passed uh, four digits not that long ago above 1,000 subs so huge thank you to everyone that has supported the channel even taken a view or commented I don't even care if you like insulted me or anything like that you have helped the channel grow so thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.